Hello, everybody, and welcome back for the second part of the September 16th Trips and Traps. Andy Serling, Eric Donovan. Three more races to bring you, all from closing day up at Saratoga, and we'll take a look at one of the final grass races up at the spa. We're looking at the number eight, Justify, who's uh, going to have an eventful run through the first turn that I think affects how she runs the rest of the race. Yeah, Justify is an 0 for 13, I think, now maiden, but Justify is a better than it looks 0 for 13. A horse that in her previous start had run sneakily well in finishing a distant second in that race, and I liked her in this race. A lot of people did. She was around 5 to 2 here. Ramon Dominguez is riding her. Now, one thing we know about Ramon, he's not a Russian gun rider. I don't know. I guess he just can't rate her. He had that spot to go back and rate her behind horses. Didn't work out. Now you see her forced out five wide, gunning for the front on the first turn. At this point, you almost think that Ramon, as smart as he is, just sort of said, I have, I've got no chance here. I just got a horse I can't control, and I'm just going to go up to the front and just see what happens. It was a fast pace, and the horse who's involved in the pace finished way, way back in here. And Justify, she's a horse that wants to come from well back. She was just ranking to here and never had a chance. Yeah, up a little too close early on. But I think also being taken out into the turn a little bit too, kind of maybe forced Ramon's hand to you know, press on the gas a little bit just to get away from that situation so that she wouldn't be carried out so wide the whole turn. You know, we wanted to try to gain some ground and to be able to maybe move over to save some, save some ground as well, but uh, certainly that's going to affect the, how a horse that likes to come from off the pace finishes. Right. I, see, I'm not sure. I think the horse just took off on him. Mm, because right. you know Ramon wanted to tuck that horse in in the first turn. That's what he does better than any other rider. And here's Justify making the lead here. The, win favorite, the, w the winner was the favorite. I guess winning punch and had a perfect, perfect trip here. Uh, and... and I just justify, this is just not her game. Is she going to be ranked in the future? Is she an 0 for 13 horse that's always going to find a way to make herself lose? Maybe that's the case. But I'll tell you something, now she's a little bit dirtied up off that this race, and she didn't have a chance in here. Will she settle more at Belmont? I don't know. Will the one-turn race be easier for her? Is, it would be interesting to see if Ramon rides her back, if he's saying, you know what, give me another chance on her, if he just says, I don't even want to deal with this horse anymore, because this is not the way he rides. And to see a horse get a ride like this means he couldn't control her. That's from very... Uh, Low-profile connections to the trainer Sal Campanella, a uh, guy that's only started uh, 23 horses uh, so far this year. So uh, you're definitely going to get helped out with the price of there. there. I hope so. We didn't this day at 5 to 2. <laughs> but uh, like you said, the form's a little dirtied up now, so maybe that'll be an edge. Next time out, we want to take a look at the uh, Three Chimneys Hopeful at Saratoga, the next to last race up at the spa. Three, two horses were interested, the number three horse, Aspire, and the number six, Overlap. Yeah, and you know, I'll tell you something. Ultimately, the more I've watched this race, I still think the winner of this race is Dublin was the best horse simply because as we're going to show and we'll show some trouble in this and the head on everybody that did the second and third horse they came from well back in here and Dublin was far and away the closest to the pace of anybody that ran at all. This is true you see the two horses that we've highlighted uh, overlap in the back and then we also have Aspire and the uh, pink silks there. Now uh, things going okay at this point for, for both horses but uh, uh, the, the six horse overlap is going to gain a little bit of ground here, kind of get uh, on close terms here with the Spire, and things are going to get a little hairy here for uh, for Overlap, who's going to be in, in behind horses and steadied a little bit there as we see them uh, highlighted once again. Overlap trying to get up into that spot there, and Overlap's going to steady out right there, right next to a Spire, and lose a, a couple lengths in that spot. They were going to show you the head-on a little bit later, too, just to show you exactly what happened over there, but, uh, you know, like you said, Andy, it is worth noting that horses did very well from off the pace here. I guess you kind of, you know, expect that, a big field, going seven furlongs, two-year-olds, you know, you would kind of expect things to melt down a little bit on the front end. Aspire, able to dust himself off very nicely, comes up the inside here, and we're going to take a look again at uh, exactly where he is. Has to steady a little bit, maybe perhaps momentarily around a horse right about there. Uh, but uh, all in all, uh, I thought he ran very well in here, despite getting a favorable pace scenario set up, and of course, the uh, overlap in behind. Overlap's really not going to do too much running in the stretch, but Aspire's going to, you know, come out and, and make a very nice run here. I think Aspire got a very nice trip in a lot of ways, but what he did show Shows he had fight. He was bumping around. I mean, you compare this to the first episode of the Pletcher second time star. It's Aspire's just a second time starter who showed some gameness in his first start coming from off the pace and, and beating, I think, a Pletcher horse who's actually loose in the lead that didn't run well the next time. What Aspire showed is that as a second time starter, he can be he can he can get hit around, bumped around, and, and, and he comes back fighting. But he still did have dynamics in a lot of ways in his favor, as in some ways to the third finisher, but he swung wide. But here's the contact. 
yeah, Aspire and Overlap are uh, about a path separates them now, but uh, I think Overlap maybe gets a little bit green in here, or maybe Aspire comes out a little bit, and we're going to see uh, Aspire's back end go out uh, about twice there, and, and you see uh, Overlap's check as well. There's one bump there and another bump uh, coming up as well, and, and I think that uh, hint, you know, that that's that's a, a you know a feather in the cap of Aspire to be able to pick yourself up and dust yourself off here, and we'll see uh, Overlap steady once again here as we come around the, the uh, far turns. Yeah, but I do want to point out. Last, second to last, third to last, two of those horses ran 2-3 because you see moving on the far outside to be the third place finisher. I agree, you know, there, there's some bumping around in here. I, I don't know, you. some horses seem to fight through it, some horses don't fight through it, and certainly the young horses. Aspire shown that he can fight through it. I, I still think he had things go his way, but he is a nice horse. And, and, and as the distances get farther, he handles the distances. He has the kind of running style. I don't know he's going to be that, that far behind as we sort of stretch out. He'll probably be okay. You know, I'm on the fence with Dublin. He hasn't run a fast race. He had a perfect trip the time before when he won. He had good, he, but, he, but he was too close to base here. The races haven't been fast. Where are the fast two-year-olds outside of the Phillies? Yeah, that's a good point. We haven't uh, seen anyone really other than Hot Dixie Chick on the uh, East Coast really you know, blazing their way uh, around the uh, ovals uh, going in uh, grade one or, or grade two, a two-year-old race as well. Uh, one more race to show you, and uh, we'll take a look at the uh, final race from Saratoga. We're interested in the number nine, a Western Connection. Yeah, I, this was the last race of the meet, and of course West Connection that I had tried in here, and, and I, I don't think it's really sour grapes. A West Connection's a horse, it's interesting, you'll see him, there he is sort of steadying back behind the pack, and he, he was closer to the pace in at least two of his three races, maybe the five and a half just too short for him, but he doesn't get out that well as we'll see when we look at the head on, he just gets shuffled out of the race, and these five and a halfs in Saratoga, you can't get shuffled out of the race like this unless you're much the best and they're blazing up front. He loses all chance. This is a horse that broke his maiden here. I believe the race after Rachel Alexandra won the Mother Goose and was disqualified in a sort of disputed disqualification. He was 9-1 to one that day and he just hasn't come back. He needed that win that day. Sometimes you say, oh, well, he'll win next time. And there he is out in the 80 path on the turn. He's actually heading to Yotto. I think maybe he'd write a <laughs> novel. So if we don't see him, it's because we know he went straight to Yotto and we'll see the head on it. I'm just saying, in this race, even though the winner came from well behind, there he is wide again. At this point, Mike Leslie knows there's nothing he can do. He just tucks him in, and he doesn't do it right at the end. He's a lot better than this race makes him look. How much is a lot better? I don't know. Is it good enough to win here? If he gets to go seven furlongs, I'd love to see him get a New York bred maiden race at seven furlongs on the turf. One more chance for poor Western Expression, who broke a little slowly. You see him at Western Connection. I, I, I can never get these horses' names right. There's so many <laughs> Westerns, especially. Uh, and now you see him out there in the five path, and you'll see him get bumped a little bit. Yeah, going to get carried out, too, by another horse that looks a little bit uh, green here. Can't really handle the turn. And uh, you see Western Connection going to have to go uh, around that horse. And when we switch uh, camera angles here, you'll exactly see how far he is out into the track. You can kind of see it there. But I think you get a better view of it right here. You know, that's about six, seven pass off the rail there. Yes, as the sun is setting on the Saratoga meet at Western Connection, the last chance we had, he was out in some sort of move towards Yano. Uh, I think Western Connection... As I said, one more chance. Six. Prefer seven, but I'll take a chance at six on the turf. New York Reds uh, on the turf. We'll see what happens. Seven was the race he won before uh, being disqualified right. that day uh, after beating uh, the wonderful separatist who uh, <laughs> likes to settle for second. Uh, likes quite the a mud, bit. apparently. And likes the mud, yes, indeed. Well, that'll do it for this episode of Trips and Traps. Remember, our viewer comments are greatly appreciated. Trips and Traps at is the email address. And that'll do it for this.